Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about one of the strongest builds in New World. It's also one of the most unique and fun builds as well, because there's so much outplay potential with this build. As you'll see in these beginning clips, there is a 1v3 in Arena, and then a 1v2 in the open world. And I'm not the best player in the world, so imagine some people with some of their mechanics come into this game and just absolutely dominate with one of the most fun builds in the game. I do think this is a build that a lot of you guys should be trying. If you guys want to learn more about the build, we'll walk you guys through the build, the attributes, the abilities you want to take, and everything regarding this build here in just a minute. But this 1v3 was a lot of fun. We'll cover it again at the end of the video and kind of walk you through what I'm thinking. But here we're into a 1v2, and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But because we have the Entomb, and then also we have the Burnout, we can get out of sticky situations very, very easily. You also have a ton of burst potential with the Fireball and the Ice Gun gauntlet with the uh, the ice spike so it's just it's just really really crazy you also have a ton of cc going the ice gauntlet and taking the ice storm and then just getting those heavy autos off so a lot of cool builds do resolve or really revolve around that you know high mobility with high utility and that's exactly what you're getting here you're also getting high damage and a ton of mobility so a very very cool build you can see i'm going light as well to continue to maximize my damage and you can see the damage charts here just crazy the amount of numbers or you know damage you can do in some of these different arenas so here we're in this 1v2 scenario we're actually just trying to mine back here get some ori uh or calcum ore between queues i am going to ice and tomb this just because they do throw out a, a you know really an ability that's going to chunk me the blunderbuss has a couple of those so you want to entomb that if you're in a kind of a sticky situation but i want to talk about some of the attributes in the build real quick while this 1v2 kind of gets a little bit farther into progress so 303 intelligence is what i'm running i'm also running 160 con this is just because you know you're going to get that 40 additional constitution when you go into an arena and you pop your con food so we're going to be running exactly a 300 intelligence 200 constitution build you can also go for 50 decks if you want to and leave out some con or intelligence i would leave out con if you are going to go for 50 dexterity though uh, you can see here the abilities we're taking the ice spike into the ice and tome and then also the ice storm as well some big perks that we'll talk about here in the middle, uh, or really it's going to be toward the end of the video, we'll talk about some of the perks, but there's a lot of great perks that can help these builds out. Here we're going to be taking the Pillar of Fire, we're going to take the Fireball, and we're going to take Burnout. And you've seen a lot of people take different abilities with this exact build. So we've seen people take Meteor Shower, very, very bad ability right now. We've also seen people take Flamethrower. Flamethrower is a very good ability right now. It's just not one that's a lot of fun to me, and it doesn't allow as much different kind of uh, unique play around the you know ability itself so you're pretty much going to have one kind of way to play the flamethrower and it's just not fun to me and it also you can make burnout and uh you know pillar of fire really really a solid build when it comes to kiting and i think that's something that i really do enjoy about this build uh, also if you're going ice staff or ice staff i wish it was an ice staff but it is an ice gauntlet which actually maybe is cooler but ice gauntlet does have some cool abilities as well. It has the Ice and Tome, obviously, that we're taking, but some people take the Totem as well. So the Totem is a very strong ability as well. I just usually stay away from it just because I'm not a big fan of throwing down a Totem and letting it do all the work for me. So there are some other ideas with the Ice Shower as well, another great ability if you're getting rushed in PvP. Definitely take the Ice Shower as it's going to basically put a wall up between you and the enemy and keep you nice and safe. So let's talk about some of the awesome perks that you're definitely going to want to take with this build. To start off, the very, very first one, the most important one that I actually have the Wildfire Torch staff for, uh, it's going to be Fireball Impact. It's going to give you 58% additional damage. You're going to want the Empowering Fireball. It's huge. Definitely put it on your weapon if possible because it's going to be really an ability that you almost always hit. Refreshing Pillar of Fire is also a very, very good one to take. I wouldn't put this on your Fire Staff. I'd probably put this on your other gear as it's not as important in 3v3 arenas and smaller scale. If you're going for OPR, Refreshing Pillar of Fire is very, very good, by the way. Efficient Burnout is a very overrated perk. I would definitely not take this perk in any situation almost. It's just not worth it, and I would rather have Freedom, Resilient, and some other great perks you can have on your gear. If we go on to the next fireball or not fireball staff but fire staff ability it's going to be the flamethrower right we didn't say much about the flamethrower in this build we aren't using it but if you are going to use flamethrower the accelerating flamethrower is very very important it's a very strong perk to take and it's going to make your flamethrower actually viable so now we have a controversial perk that i've seen people complain about saying it's not very good some people say it's very good it's the healing tomb 
I actually believe this is one of the best abilities or perks you can take. I love taking this one on the Ice Gauntlet itself because you're going to heal for 30% of your base health after Entomb ends, which is really, really strong. Also see Ice Refresh. This and Healing Tomb is definitely going to be the reasons you're able to 1v3 and 1v2 so easily. This one basically makes a killing blow with Ice's Spike's Mighty Spike or Spiky Reach, reducing all Ice cooldowns by 75% on a weapon and 43% on other gear. I would put this on other gear and you're going to have your abilities up way, way faster and you're going to kill people with Ice Spike much more than you would imagine. So definitely take this perk if possible. Another perk that's kind of just like a runner up, just like we had with the Accelerating Flamethrower is deadly frost because if you are taking ice shower because you are getting rushed by great axes or hammers or sword and shields deadly frost is actually going to be a decent upgrade on your ability so definitely take that perk if you are running ice shower next in line we are going to take a look at the light and heavy and medium requirements so light is going to be 12.9 and lower so we're going to go a medium chest and light everything else getting about 12.2 on our armor this is going to allow us, when we dodge, to do a quick roll that covers a lot of distance and consumes 50 stamina. You deal 20% more damage, which is huge, and it's actually a little bit less than you think, but unfortunately, we are going to have to take every little piece of bonus we can with damage because we are using a build that does really thrive on bursting enemies down before they can get healed or before they can recover. So easily one of the best gems you can take here is the Kroll 4. It's going to give you plus 12% damage against targets with an active crowd control status effect. That being slows, stuns, and roots. And you're going to do just enough crowd control with your Ice Gauntlet that this is going to be a very, very good gem to take inside of your Ice Gauntlet. When it comes down to what you're wanting on your fire staff, this can definitely be talked about in many different ways. You can go any way which direction you want with this one, but I like the Brash just because you are getting that plus 30% damage against targets with full health, and if they have a healer, they're going to be full health quite a bit, so that's a lot of damage over time that you're going to be getting. We also have the 2.5% physical damage absorption from the physical ward fours. These are going to be what I take specifically since I'm not going ice shower. As you can see in the clip in the background, I'm getting absolutely stunned up by war hammers, by ice, or not ice gauntlets, but great axes, by sword and shields. It's just going to be a great option for me. And if you're going ice shower instead of ice storm, maybe you can get away with just going elemental or even thrust gems specifically or just really depending on what you're playing against in that arena or you're dying to most in those arenas. So here we have a nice little 1v3 clip with the Fire Staff and the Ice Gauntlet. We're going to be going a full mage build. However, they are going to be running a sword and shield, a hammer, a spear, a lot of things that are hard to get away from. Thankfully, we hit a nice fireball into a nice burnout and we take it down to a 1v2. At this point, we have no pots up, so we're just going to sit back here and continue to eat that food as fast as possible and get some regen going. We're going to continue to juke around, throw a fireball, hit a two-for-one fireball. At this point, hitting an ice storm into an ice spike, taking this man out very, very quickly into now a 1v1. However, we are getting hit by a nice Warhammer combo by this guy with a nice execute, taking me below half. We're going to have to entomb and just continue to try to kite this man away. At this point, we're going to hit a nice ice spike. He's down to 50%. Fireball into a pillar of fire, missing the pillar of fire, but a burnout's going to be exactly what we need to continue the chase. And I'm playing him very, very close because I did just use my Oak Flesh. With the Oak Flesh bomb popped, I'm not too worried about this fight, and I know that I can win it. So there it is, the 1v3. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on.